So I am going to talk about the Brower Group a little bit. Um, so here's a definition. Uh, so the the Brower Group. So so let let X be a scheme. Um, then the Brower Group of X. Group X is the following. You this thing is defined to be equal to H two. We take the atoll site GM. Okay, so this is the Brower group of X. Is this thing? Um, okay, so we have the Brower group, and I am I. What I really wanted to talk about was the baby Brower. Uh, so definition: uh, the baby Brower group. This is non-standard. Uh, the baby Brower is um, H two. Uh, so, um, so here, this is the the uh, roots of unity here. So this is this group scheme. Um, okay, so we have the baby Brower, and, and the way to study the Brower is via the baby Brower. Um, so let me give you a lemma. Uh, here's a lemma. It says, uh, so how are Brower and Baby Brower related? So they're related by um, this exact sequence. Uh, so there's Baby Brower, there's Big Brower, there's the end torsion, there's zero. Okay, so there's this sequence here. Okay. So we have this. Um, so let me give you the proof. Uh, the proof is via the Coomer sequence. So we just take the Coomer sequence. Um, and we go from 1 to mu n. And then we, so we take uh, n, uh, sorry, multiplicative group. This is multiplication by n. So this is raising to the n, uh, the uh, nth power, so we take something here and we go x to the n, boom, like that. And then, um, okay, and so we take this and we apply um, this functor for a tall cohomology, so we do uh, this thing. And um, and what, what do we get when we when we do this? So, uh, so when we do this, we'll get um, uh, here h1, we'll start here, we'll start at the h1 term. So we're H1 GM, and then, uh, okay, sorry, my notes had something weird, I'm going to do it correctly this time, all right, so we'll do multiplication by N here, here, so this is the end of the sequence, so now we go to H2 mu N, H2 X GM, and then we have H two X G M. Okay. All right. And so this thing here is the Picard. So so now we we, we kind of just break things out. So this thing is Picard. This is Picard. Uh, this is the Brower here. This is multiplication by n. This is also Brower. Okay, so we replace this with the kernel, and replace this with the image, and when we upon doing that, uh, we get the sequence. We get that this is sandwiched between the image of the multiplication by n on the Picard, and then the multiplication by n on the Brower. So this tells us this gives us that. Um, uh, so we have n times the Picard. And then we, we replace that part with the kernel. So we have this. Okay, so it's really easy. It's super, super easy. Um, okay, so this is our first thing that we wanted to do. Um, so now I am going to prove another lemma. Uh, so let's K be any field.
Okay, so the first thing I want to say is that the Brouwer group of K is torsion. So here, again, so to do the Brouwer group of K, we do the Brouwer group of spec K. And the other thing that I want to do is the Brouwer uh, group of uh, K uh, N. So this, this N torsion of this is, is H2 is baby Brouwer. Okay, so... Um, actually, what this is going to tell us is that um, uh, as a consequence of 1 and 2, uh, let me just say this before proving the lemma. Uh, so this, this, this says that um, Brower is the union of baby Browers. Okay, so... Uh, so Brower is the union of baby Brower. Brower is the union of baby Brower. Uh, this is four fields. Okay, so so okay, so this is the the obvious corollary. Let me prove the lemma. So let me give the proof of two. So I'm going to prove that um, uh, the the baby Brower is the torsion of the Brower for the fields. Um, so so let's assume uh, that one, i.e., that uh, this thing is torsion. Okay, so we have one goes to mu n k star goes to uh, k star. Uh, here, this is going to be the nth power, so x goes to x to the n. So this is the Coomer sequence again. Um, so we apply um, uh, this. So this is a Galois cohomology or a tall cohomology. This is the same thing. Galois cohomology or group. So Galois cohomology is this group cohomology with the Galois group, and. Um, and so, and that's the same as a, the tall cohomology for fields. So, to get, um, so we have H1 K, K star, uh, H2, so I'm going to start at K, mu N, H2 K, K star. Okay, and then we go over, this map is multiplication by N, K, K star here. Okay, so here, um, so this is zero by Hilbert's theorem 90. Hilbert's theorem 90 uh, tells us this part. Um, and then, so that, that's exactly what Hilbert's theorem 90 says. It says that this is vanishing um, here. Um, so then we have this is zero, and then we have this exact sequence here. And uh, we can always make the, the exact sequence, so this goes on, right? But you can always truncate an exact sequence by uh, replacing this part, this map here, by the kernel. So then we have uh, H2. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so this is Brower. All right. So this is Brower, by the way, yeah. Um, so this is this. This is zero. This is zero. Okay, so which implies that um, okay. All right, so that proves part one. Uh, so let's do the proof of one. <coughs> so the proof of one is is kind of a general fact. Um, so. So if gamma is pro, so this is a fortiori or whatever is pro finite. So that just means um, I'm going to prove something by proving something stronger. Um, so if gamma is pro finite, then uh, h i gamma a is torsion uh, for every a. Uh, so for every uh, a in 
So this is a general fact. Okay, so if we do this for a profinite group, and that, that finishes the proof. Okay, so this just says that Brower of a field is built from baby Browers. Um, okay. Uh, so now I want to talk about the residue map. Um, okay. So here's the idea. So let's say X is a scheme. X is an irreducible scheme. Over field. Let's say that X is normal. Um, and I think that's all we, all we need. Uh, let's say the field, and it doesn't matter what the field is, but we'll call the field F. Okay, so we, uh, we have the following sequence. Um, okay, so we, we need it to be irreducible for the following reason. So we need it to have a generic point, and so we need it to have a, a function field, okay? And um, we need the scheme to be normal so we can talk about valuations on um, associated to co-dimension one points in the scheme. So this is so we're going to use the topology of schemes a little bit. And so, as you remember, there's to every point in a the scheme, there's kind of a, a irreducible um, variety inside of it, which is the closure of the irreducible subscheme, which is the closure of this point. Um, all right. Uh, Maybe instead of irreducible, maybe I should really say this is integral. Um, okay, integral is what should have been called irreducible. Integral means that essentially the, the coordinate rings of this thing are, are, are domains. That's what it means. Okay, so, uh, so the theorem is as follows. Um, so there's the theorem. Okay, so there exists a sequence uh, here, zero to the Brouwer group of X, the Brouwer group of K. Okay, so first of all, this is showing that, that this injects into here. That's kind of interesting. Um, so that you can take this and stick it into its function field, the Brouwer group of its function field. But the other part is, is that there's this kind of thing that measures um, the the uh, difference between these, and this is uh, so for these co-dimension one points, we can take the function field of those co-dimension one points, the Q mod Z. Okay, so there's this residue map here, and the idea is, is that um, so the idea here, there's two idea, two ideas. Uh, the first idea is that this thing is is contained in this thing and the second thing is that the residue map uh, detects uh, a global Brouwer classes okay um, now, to do this, I'm going to need to um, build some lemmas. I don't know who this is due to. Um, I, so, I should say then again, that, uh, if I haven't said this, I'll probably put a note at the beginning that um, that this is uh, really, these are notes that I was meaning to do before, uh, but this is it has to do for the Arizona Winter School. So, I, I came, this is for the 2015 Arizona Winter School. And so, I went to it and then I had some notes and I wanted to like take some notes, um, but I forgot to do that. Okay, so um, uh, so so let's let F be any field in the world. Uh, I need the following things. I need the following things. So uh, H I F Q is zero. Um, H one of uh, F Z is um, zero. And um, and then we have H I of F Q mod Z is isomorphic to H I plus one uh, F Z. So this is again Galois cohomology here. So this is group cohomology for the absolute Galois group of F. 
and this is the setup here. Okay, so let's do the proof. Okay, so recall that we said before that uh, HI gamma of A is torsion. So A is an abelian group, gamma is a profinite group, uh, is torsion uh, for every uh, profinite gamma. Okay, so we're going to use this fact. And so um, I this is going to imply that... Uh, that uh, H uh, I gamma Q is zero. Okay, so why? So this is kind of like a subproof. So this map here, uh, multiplication by M, is uh, is an isomorphism of abelian groups. Okay. So this tells us that uh, the following that here that H I uh, gamma Q multiplication by M to H I gamma Q is an isomorphism abelian groups. Okay. So this tells us. that uh, here the kernel of multiplication by M is equal to zero as a subspace of HI gamma at Q. But we also have that since this is torsion, this is the union over M to the kernels of M, which is zero. Okay, and so that that, that concludes the, the subproof part here that um, that this part is zero. Where is it? This thing zero. Okay, so um, now we, we can show that. Uh, so this this again. So this tells us that uh, um, H I K Q. Well, this is H I, and this is G of K bar over K Q. Here and this is gamma, so this is zero. Okay. Um, okay. So the next part is to to get. Um, okay, to get the next part, um, H one F Z is equal to zero. Uh, we use the sequence. Uh, 0 goes to Z, goes to Q, goes to Q mod Z, goes to 0. Okay, so we'll apply um, so we apply oh, I guess we should have done an F here. So here K is equal to F by the way. Um, so here um, we're going to apply cohomology. So what are we going to do? We'll do uh, here, dot dot dot, and we'll do H I um, F. Uh, so H I F Z to H I. Oh, let's see. How, where do I want to start this? Well, let me just write it out. H I uh, F Q. H I F Q mod Z. And then we go to the next one, H I plus one, uh, F uh, Z. Okay, H I uh, plus one F Q. Uh, see, I did start it at the not the optimal place, but it doesn't matter. Q mod Z. Okay, it goes on. Okay, so now we have vanishing theorems here and here. Okay, which tells us that these two are isomorphic. So this tells us that, um, uh, so, it's isomorphic to 
So for all um, i uh, bigger than or equal to zero, I believe. Okay, and so then uh, what's going to happen? So then at the lower terms, so then I, I claim at the lower terms. Uh, okay, so so this proves. Um, this. Oh, sorry, we had this, and then we had this. Okay, so let's see, is that, that's what it looks like. Uh, right, and then, um, yeah, and then uh, we need to show that H, I, H1. So let's look at H1. So we have H0. Okay, yeah, here's the exact sequence. Okay, then we only need to know this part. This is zero. This thing here is sandwiched between zeros, so that makes it zero. Uh, so that's H zero. Oh crap, that's H zero, not H one. Uh, okay, so let me, we have to keep going. Uh, H uh, zero of F Q mod Z. And then we have uh, H. Oh, uh, one of F Z, and we have uh, H uh, one of F Q. Ah, okay. So So this is zero, and then I think this is zero here. So I guess we need it. This is, needs to be. This needs to be zero too. Okay. So this is also zero, and then I guess this is. This implies that this thing is zero. Okay. All right. So. Um, this closes the proof of those 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 properties. So here are the properties that we were looking at. Great. Um, now we can I can move to actually doing the residue map. So the residue map is built from a special sequence. So we so there exists a certain special sequence. So a fact, and I'll give kind of an explanation for this again. Uh, we're going to use the notation that k is x. Here is uh, x over f. Um, again, this is irreducible. And then we're going to say it's normal. Um, and the, uh, so what are we going to take? We're going to take 0 to gm x. So this is the, let's say, over x. And then uh, eta is going to be the generic point. So the eta is going to be the generic point of uh, of of um, of x. I uh, x. So push forward z zero. Okay. So there's this. The fact is that there exists this exact sequence. Okay. And let me make a remark here. Um, so. This is an incarnation of the following. Uh, so we can take x, we can look at the, so u, this is open, right here. Uh, and then we can take the residue field of x. So I'll just write this again. So these are co-dimension one points. So the closure are going to be the co-dimension one subschemes here. And so here to here, we'll take f, and it maps to the sum of, for x and x1, of the orders of f at x. So now this is why we have normal, so we have these valuations. And so the idea is that uh, uh, global guys, uh, 
uh, satisfy a product formula. A product formula. Actually, the global guy, um, uh, maybe this is not right. Actually, what this is saying is, um, this is not right. <laughs> what this is saying is, is that, uh, if this guy is global, then uh, the valuations here are, are well. They so these guys do satisfy a product formula, but um, they need to have no poles, right? So they have no poles. So I guess, uh, yeah. Uh, let me get some more paper. Okay. So to this, so how are we going to get to get the residue formula? A residue sequence. Uh, we apply, um, well, the tall cohomology to, to that sequence. Okay, and what do we get? So here's the sequence at the top here. And um, so here we take H1 of X, the direct sum of X of X1. I x star z h two x to g m over x. Uh, this goes to h two of x, and then we have the generic point, and we're including this. Uh, and this goes to h two of x, the direct sum over the codimensional one points of uh, I x push forward so this is okay and it keeps going okay so um, here note that if we have a point uh, y is a topological point of uh, x there's this map here i y from the single point and this is spec of kappa of y so this is a single point and it maps to um, X. Okay, so there's this guy here. And this map is affine. This map is affine. It's an affine morphism of schemes, meaning that the inverse image of an affine uh, open set is open. And this is trivial because this is just a point. So uh, this push forward functor here is exact. And this means that we can compute cohomology either on this scheme whenever you have this push forward being exact, either on this thing or on this thing. Okay. So, uh, so now we can kind of break down the terms in this. And so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to break down uh, the pieces of, of this sequence. Um, the first thing that I want to break down is that H1 of X with this direct sum of i of x star of z. So this is, well, we can take the direct sum outside. i of x star of z, like this. And then I'm going to use that remark that I just made. Um, and then I'm just going to do cohomology uh, for this scheme. And so the atoll cohomology for this scheme is the same thing as um, uh, the, uh, the group cohomology there or the Galois cohomology. Uh, and then by the lemma, uh, this is zero. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is, is that we have H2 of X GM. This is the Brouwer group of X. Okay, then let's go back here. So I'm doing each term. I did this one. This is zero. 
This is the Brower of X. Okay, next term. Next term is uh, H2X, and then we included the generic point of GM. Okay, so this is equal to uh, H2 of kappa of eta. This was just K, what we called K, GM. And this is just the Brouwer group of K. Okay, so now this thing just becomes the Brouwer group of K. And finally, uh, we have uh, H2 of x, direct sum of x and x1. And then we include this thing here. And so this is the direct sum. So we can pull this out. OK, so um, so okay, so now we, we, we need to describe this. We need a description of this. And this follows from the lemma. So the lemma tells us that, um, where's our lemma? This lemma allows us to relate this going back one. Okay, so this is equal to the direct sum of H1. All right, and so now we can write down our sequence. And so, so putting this all together, uh, gives the following sequence. Okay, uh, and then uh, this is the yeah this is the sequence that we wanted to prove. Okay, that's it.